hello there, my beautiful movie peeps, or should I say hola, because I'm coming to you from Mexico. That's right, guys. That's where I've been the past couple of days. Some of you guys know I told you this on the last side flick, and it's been kind of an entertaining time here. I went to the little flea market, what they got going on here. I found a whole booth dedicated to just knock off Chucky stuff, and oh my, I, I couldn't resist, guys. I bought something. Let me just show this off to you. So they had some like these Chucky sneakers, obvious knockoffs. No way Nike has produced these. I would have known if they did, but they had these Freddy Krueger ones that were made way back and are now like outrageously expensive online. And good people of Mexico, you know they had to manufacture those because they knew I would be in town. And oh my goodness, I got this in pesos for the equivalent of what's 30 bucks in the U.S. I think this is a good deal. I'm not going to tell anybody they're fake. You're not going to tell anybody they're fake. I'm aware of these loud and proud. Freddy Krueger, jeez. I'm having a good time here, guys, but, uh. We got movie news to discuss, y'all. I like how they even gave me a Nike box, like, like it's actually them who made it. But some of the movie news we're going to be discussing here today, guys, is for one, what's going on with Marvel right now, because a lot has happened since I last talked to you guys. We got delayed movies for weird reasons. They just hit a box office low. I'll be giving you my thoughts on the Garfield trailer, good old Chris Pratt strikes again, and an update to the Coyote vs. Acme situation that has got me very happy. That alone, so much more. You guys know the drill. Timestamps in the description. Hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, especially for Mexico. Tell me your favorite Mexican food while I'm here, man. I'd love to know. But all right, kicking things off here with the Garfield trailer that was released, revealing to us Chris Pratt as the famous orange cat. And you know what? C comparing this to his Mario voice, his natural Chris Pratt voice sounds pretty pretty fine for Garfield. I'm really liking the animation style. They gave us little baby Garfield. That's always how they sneak you in nowadays, showing us a baby version of the animated characters we love. But aside from that, the world does look very lovely, and some of the humor even got to me in here. The, the one part where Garfield's like, I've never jumped. <laughs> same, same, my friend. You ever jumped a train? I've never jumped. The only thing kind of making me hesitant on this movie, and it was none of the footage, but it's the plot synopsis that I'm like, that's what you're doing with the Garfield movie? Okay. So some of you might have seen there was the Samuel Jackson Garfield cat that showed up, and that's actually his father in the movie. That's right, Garfield's father makes an appearance, and the plot synopsis that they have at the bottom of the trailer is Garfield, voiced by Chris Pratt, the world-famous, Monday-hating, lasagna-loving indoor cat is about to have a wild outdoor adventure. After an unexpected reunion with his long-lost father, scruffy street cat Vic, Samuel Jackson, Garfield and his canine friend O are forced from their perfectly pampered life into joining Vic in a hilarious high stakes heist. I like heist. I like Garfield. I'm not sure if that's the direction I wanted with this one, but then again, I didn't think the sequel to his live action movie would be him going to London. I guess Garfield is just one of those characters where nothing other than lasagna and hating Mondays is really his story, so you could do anything with the cat. And they decided with a heist film, I'm gonna give it a chance, but that was not what I was expecting. Overall though, I did like the trailer. Let me know your guys' thoughts on the Garfield trailer and Chris Pratt's voice. You know, would you go with this or his Mario voice? Let me know. Moving on here, we got a small update on the Masters Universe live action movie. This is a film that's been in development hell for years. It's been with one studio, then another, then this, then that. And now we got a new little update, thanks to Variety here, where they're saying, Masters of the Universe movie eyes new home at Amazon after Netflix exits. Yeah, that was the last home for Masters of the Universe live action. It was going to be with Netflix. Noah Centineo was already cast as He-Man. I thought he was going to do a fine enough job, and I thought Netflix would be the place to do it. But no, Amazon is now the place for He-Man. And although it's just another streaming service, I kind of prefer it. In the article, they mention here that Amazon is fully on board to give this a big theatrical release. So one, they're going to want to put in the expensive money like Amazon has been doing with their projects, same as Netflix. So it's going to look grand, which is what I'm hoping for. And they still want to release it in theaters. That's why I kind of dig Amazon as one of the streaming studios. They do market their projects. They give them good budgets. And from time to time, they release them in theaters. As opposed to how Netflix does it, where they can spend hundreds of million dollars on a show or movie, and they'll never market it. They just release it. And they hope that some kid out there makes a TikTok, and then millions of people will go watch it. That's kind of how the Netflix budgeting works. Let me know what you guys think about Amazon being the new home for the live-action He-Man movie. Moving on here, we got a tiny kind of indirect update to Scream 7 that I definitely had to talk about, because it looks like things are coming full circle. We had a report by Deadline coming out today that when 
Wednesday season two with Jenna Ortega is set to begin filming late April 2024. Now, the reason I bring this up is because a lot of scoopers online have been mentioning that Scream 7 is set to begin filming early spring 2024 so like around march you pair that up also with another article with melissa barrera sam who had to drop out of a movie that was scheduled to start filming in spring for scheduling conflicts oh it looks like our stars are getting ready and pampered for Scream 7. That just makes me happy. Sometimes you don't know with the Hollywood strike and everything getting delayed and projects moving around and stars getting booked up, what is and isn't important. You know, as much as I love Scream, I'm not going to lie that Wednesday made a big impact and Jenna Ortega just became so huge. Part of me was like, are they going to bring her back? Are they going to make it work? Or are they just going to give her like one or two scenes? This lets me know they have Scream as a priority and I can't wait to see what Christopher Landon does with the seventh movie. But you guys see here that the stars of Scream 7 are strategically moving their schedules to be open to film in March. So that gets you excited. Moving on to some Marvel talk, because we've gotten a lot of updates since I last talked to you guys. One of the big ones that you probably have already heard by now is the delay to some of these projects. So just catching up with you guys, Deadpool 3 will be releasing July 26, 2024. Captain America Brave New World will be February 14, 2025. Fantastic Four, May 2nd, 2025. Thunderbolts, July 25th, 2025. And Blade, November 7th, 2025. Now this was expected with the whole Hollywood strike that projects would be delayed i'm just still very happy deadpool 3 will be releasing in 2024 in summer it is getting a bit of a delay from its last may release day but i don't mind that gives them some breathing room for the vfx and to get that movie all polished up but i for sure wanted to talk about these rumors that captain america brave new world is not shaping up to be good because there was a report that came out that they're going to do four to six months of reshoots on this movie and wow that is is not the Marvel way, buddy. What is happening, Kevin Fagoli? It feels like every other week we are finding out something new behind the Marvel scenes that is just making us go, what is What's going on? We had like the Daredevil show having to scrap their episodes, start over, fire the creative team, hire a new one. Then we hear all the weird stuff happening in a blade behind the scenes and how the stars may be threatening to leave if they don't make this movie soon. And now we got Captain America Brave New World looking to do four to six months of reshoots. That's your entire movie. A, a lot of Marvel movies are made within a four to five month window. If you're doing four to six months of reshoots, you're refilming that entire thing. And if the movie was that bad or unsalvageable that they need to do that many months of reshoots, where was Kevin Feige during the script process, during the story process, during the days of filming when it should have been obvious that this project is not going the way they wanted to? You know, I'm looking at all those other Marvel movies on the list, and out of all of them, I think Captain America 4 is going to be one that could be like the Marvels, where... I'm excited for it. I want Sam Wilson, Captain America to succeed and people to check out his movie and fall in love with his character, but I have a big feeling because it's not Chris Evans, they're not going to show up and we're going to have another soft box office opening and that's going to suck. So whenever I heard that, that just kind of made me really sad for that movie and I hope whatever happens, it still turns out good, but uh, this is making me hesitant on that film. And I guess that does bring me to talk about the Marvel's box office openings this weekend because it is now the MCU's lowest opening weekend of all time at $47 million. The previous bottom record holder was The Incredible Hulk at $55 million and man, like it's just sad. I, I think the biggest uh, thing that makes me wonder about the Marvel's is what made that opening so low? Because I think there's so many factors. Everybody wants to point at one thing. Oh, it's the Captain Marvel haters thinking it's just that. Oh, it's, it's all women superhero movie. So it's that. I, it's so many factors. There's a strike. The actresses couldn't promote the movie. I also think the Disney Plus and oversaturation of Marvel content has just really burnt out some people or even interested them to go. Fans and audiences, I think, are going to become extremely picky about what Marvel movies they go see. Kind of like DC films, you know? Unless it's Batman or freaking Batman related like Joker DC people aren't showing up and Marvel might be headed that way where unless it's a big star like Spider-Man an Avengers film you're just not gonna have people showing up like they used to and that is sad man and I hope Marvel takes this as a wake-up call and they kind of reassess their projects and maybe really focus on the quality I mean I was looking at some of these bottom lower numbers and it kind of blows my mind that something like Shang-Chi opened at over 70 million dollars when that was like a brand Brand new unknown never heard of hero but just because it had that marvel banner people bought a ticket and 
it looks like those days are gone. Let me know what you guys think about all these Marvel updates. Uh, another big thing I definitely wanted to talk about with you guys is this whole Coyote vs. Acme situation because it's been a roller coaster. So if you haven't heard by now, I did make a separate video where I ranted off. I got really upset that the only live action CGI hybrid Looney Tunes movie that was coming up, Coyote vs. Acme, was essentially canceled the same way Batgirl was. It was a 100% completed movie and they thought, now nah, we're never going to show this to anybody just to save some money for tax purposes. I'm like, why are you doing that, Warner Brothers? And Hollywood and the people came through. An article by The Hollywood Reporter came out today saying Warner Brothers reverses course on Coyote vs. Acme after filmmakers rebel. And so many interesting things are being revealed about Coyote vs. Acme. For one, they're saying that Warner Brothers is now willing to shop the movie around to different buyers. We had heard this in the first report that although Warner Brothers just wanted to write it off for tax purposes, other studios and streaming services were willing to buy it and they just didn't want to do that. So Warner Brothers will now be screening the movie for like Netflix, Amazon, Apple, Universal, Paramount, which I am hearing are the most wanted buyers right now. So this could still very likely get a theatrical release instead of just ending up on streaming. If I had to put my money on it, I'm going to go with like Amazon winning it. I mean, they just came out with a teaser trailer for another Warner Brothers property they bought off of them, Merry Little Batman, where it's basically Home Alone, but for Batman. The other interesting thing I saw here is other than fans like me getting online and being upset at Warner Brothers, oh, the filmmakers and people in Hollywood were also pissed. It got revealed that after the news broke, a bunch of filmmakers in Hollywood started calling up Warner Brothers and canceling their meetings for possibly doing movies with them and deciding to take their creative ideas to another studio. And that's exactly what I was talking about whenever I heard about Coyote vs. Acme. Why would any writer, filmmaker, director, actor want to work at Warner Brothers, pour in a year or two of their lives, passion and sweat, for them just to call them up and say, for tax purposes, your movie's never going to be seen. That is heartbreaking to so many people. Warner Brothers is losing a lot of street cred right there, and Coyote vs. Acme was just another straw that broke the camel's back. So yeah, I, as a Looney Tunes fan, super happy that this movie could possibly see the light of day. Warner Brothers is getting their just desserts out of it, and uh, I think we're all winning. I throw it off to you guys. What do you think about the Coyote vs. Acme situation? roller coaster ride that it's been bringing us here to an update on the five nights of freddy's movie man this movie just continues to win non-stop i don't know if you've heard by now but it is now the number one highest grossing box office movie of 2023 i'm thinking about making a video just talking about that list because i think it's always interesting to see what people are willing to buy tickets for in terms of horror movies they want to see but right now it is number one at 250 million dollars worldwide and with the strike now being over we finally have Matthew Lillard talking a little bit about the movie, William Afton, and I wanted to share some of his comments because I did find them interesting. In an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, Matthew Lillard said, I play a monster who at the end of the day gets his comeuppance and is thrown into this horror realm that he's created. The hard part about playing this part is the pressure I put on myself to honor the fans, to deliver a great performance in an iconic role. I'm excited to see when they greenlight the second movie, the plan we put together to make it even bigger and even more more successful. Those have to be exciting words. Again, even if you didn't love the Five Nights of Freddy's movie, I think we can all agree Matthew Lillard as William Afton was the best part and should have been the character that got more screen time. I still wish we got more of that, but I think they're going to learn from that and give Matthew Lillard so much more screen time in the next movie, whether it be in flashbacks or him in the spring Bonnie suit that I guess we're just calling now the Yellow Rabbit. But hearing him say that he hopes they green light the second movie, which is definitely going to happen. This movie made so much money, regardless of the negative reviews, it's going to get a sequel. The fact that he already knows the idea for what they're going to do in the second film and that he knows it's going to be bigger and more successful... I, I want to see what that means because, again, Five Nights at Freddy's, that movie was made for the fans. And luckily, enough fans showed up to make that a big success. But there was still a chunk of people that were disappointed with that movie or they went in expecting to see something and it just didn't work for them. Mostly a lot of general audience members that wanted to be part of the hype, but because they didn't know anything Five Nights at Freddy's, the movie was a little confusing to them. Seeing the box office for the second movie to me is going to be so fascinating because that'll let me know how many fans stayed to come back either way it's just great
great to hear Matthew Lillard talk about the movie and that he knows it's going to be greenlit. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are on the Five Nights at Freddy's movie success, Matthew Lillard finally talking about it, and if you're as curious as me about the box office change for the sequel. But that is all the movie news I currently have going on for you guys. I want to thank you so much for taking time out of day to watch me talk some movie news. I really appreciate you guys sticking with me when I'm not at the studio and a little late on some news. Y'all are the absolute best, and I love doing this for you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter at 3C Films or on TikTok at 3C Films. But as always, I'm Chris. Take care.